video, I'm going to walk you through how to set up Navex credit card. So when you're on the Roll Center when you first come in, if you've not completed the setup for Navex credit card, you'll see a notification asking, do you want to get started with Navex credit card? And then you can click here to run the setup. If you've received that trial merchant account or your live merchant account information already, you can check I've already have a merchant account here. So let's talk about setting up the general behavior. The next two steps allow you to configure the behavior of the credit card functionality. They've already been pre-configured with default values, but if those values don't fit your process, please change them. Require security code. It's also known as that CVV code. It's the three or four digit code on the back of your card. You can select between the following options. Require that security code always, the first transaction per document, first transaction on the card, or never. So always is pretty self-explanatory. If you want to require that code on every transaction, you're gonna select that option. First authorization per document is the first time you're processing a transaction for a specific document. For example, a sales order, you're required to enter the security code. If you change the authorization amount, for example, if it increase the order amount or process partial invoices and then reauthorize the remaining amount, you're not required to enter the security code on that second piece. First transaction per card. This setup will only require you to enter the security code once per card to validate that the card is valid. If you have activated the setting, perform initial validation for new cards. The system asks for the security code at the time of entering the credit card and then not anymore after that. And obviously never, if you never want to require that security code to be entered, you can choose never. When processing credit cards, there are two different ways of processing the card. The right one for you to choose depends on your process and individual requirements. Authorization and charge, you're authorizing a transaction on a credit card, which means that you're placing a hold on the customer's credit card for the order amount. Once you ship and invoice the order, the card will be charged. This guarantees that the customer has enough funds available on their card while not charging the card before product actually ships. This is what the preferred setup is, but you can also choose sale. So if you have a long period between placing the order and shipping it, or if you ship an invoice right after the order is placed, you can also select the sale option. This will not authorize a card at the time of the order entry and will only charge the card when the order is invoiced. This could result in declined cards or insufficient funds at the time of shipping and invoicing. So keep that in mind. Do not use address verification. When credit card transactions are processed, the system checks the validity of the billing address that's defined. If you don't want this, you can turn this off entirely for that address verification functionality. AVS response for success. If you're using address validation, the system responds with different statuses. You can define here which of the statuses you consider that the verification succeeded. For instance, not always is the full address provided, so you can choose to accept when zip code matches. Do not allow address verification failure. So when a credit card transaction is processed, the billing address is validated. If the validation comes back with an error, such as the address doesn't match, or the validation code could not be performed, the user gets confirmation displayed with the error and then can choose to accept the transaction or not. If you don't want to allow the user to make that decision, check this field and any address verification other than okay will result in a failure. And then perform initial validation for new cards. We spoke about this a minute ago, but you can check this field if you want to perform a validation on the card when you enter a new card. This will authorize a small transaction on the customer's credit card. If the security code is required, you'll have to enter the security code. If the address validation, as well as the card verification in general, you will be alerted and you could choose not to use the card then. The authorization is voided right after the validation. When placing a small authorization on the card, the customer can see a pending charge on their account. This can stay in the customer accounts for several days, depending on which bank account they're using. Let's go to the next step. So here's a few general settings that you can turn on or off. The first one is update authorization when amount changes. When you increase the amount of a document, the difference in the original amount and the new amount is authorized against the credit card. This will result in multiple authorizations against the same credit card, which are visible on the customer's credit card statement. It will result in multiple charges. This can cause questions from your customers. When you place a check mark in this field and the transaction amount increases, the system will void the original transaction and create a new authorization with the full amount leading to only one charge at the time of invoicing the order. 
However, some banks do leave the voided authorization as a pending charge for a few days, and that could cause the customer to not have their full amount available on the card that they use, which can also cause issues for your customers. It is recommended to have this field checked unless you have constant order changes in the customers inquiring about the authorizations that are held in place. Allow partial authorization. By default, Navex credit card requires an authorization for the entire amount of the order or the invoice before the document can be processed. If you want to allow customers to only pay a partial amount before the document can be released, you can turn this option on. Use amount to ship when, you're, when you want to use the amount to ship on the order instead of the amount to invoice to authorize, please check that field. Create credit memos for invoice refunds. If you enable this setup, the credit memo will be created when a refund for an invoice is processed. This will return any products to the inventory, and if it's disabled, a financial credit is processed instead. Tokenize manual cards. When activated, bank accounts and cards that are entered on the individual documents, the card is automatically tokenized and stored for future use. If this setting is disabled, the bank account and credit cards are not tokenized or stored. And then if you are using service management, you would want to turn that on and there will be additional fields that we will not review in during this session. Let's go to the next tab. Automation rules which is the next assisted setup, allows you to define setups related to processing of sales documents, such as sales orders or sales invoices, auto authorized credit card sales orders on, authorized credit card sales invoices on. So depending on the option chosen for each one of these, credit cards are automatically authorized for sales orders or unposted sales invoices, either never or release, so the credit card will automatically be authorized at the time of releasing the sales order or the sales invoice. Shipment, the credit card will be authorized at the time of shipping the sales order or sales invoice. Those are set up in two different fields here. Auto capture credit card for sales orders, sales invoice. Depending on the option you choose, credit cards are automatically captured for the sales order, either never, meaning no automatic capture will be performed, Release, credit cards are automatically captured at the time of this release of the sales order or sales invoice in the next field. Shipment, they're going to be captured at the time of shipping the sales order or invoice. Or invoice, credit cards are authorized at the time of the invoicing of the sales order or sales invoice in this next field. Auto capture ACH sales order or sales invoice. So depending on the option you choose in either one of these fields, you're never going to capture for ACH orders. Upon release, the bank is automatically charged at the time you release the sales order or the invoice. On shipment, the bank account will be charged, or on invoice, the bank account will be charged for either the sales order or the sales invoice. Reauthorize on partial invoice, so when an authorization is performed for an order and the order is shipped partially, the credit card is charged for the partial amount. If a charge is processed against an authorization, the remaining amount on the authorization is automatically canceled. If you check this setup, the new authorization is automatically created at the time of the partially invoicing of the order. Additional amounts can be authorized, as you can see here, for shipping charges or other types of fees. And in order to do that, you can set this up by none, by a percentage or a fixed amount, enter the amount or the percentage, and choose whether you would like this line to be a GL account or a resource. If you've already received your merchant account information from our credit card processor, you can enter this security ID, user ID, and password that they've given you. If you'd like to set up an additional merchant account, which can be done if you're dealing with a different uh, currency code, or maybe you want to separate merchant accounts by maybe a department dimension, or maybe even by country code, you can set up an additional merchant account. Credit card reconciliation. It's recommended to define the bank account in the credit card reconciliation. But you can also define a GL account if you wish. The account is used to record all credit card transactions. When you receive the funds for the credit purchases, then you can record bank transfers into your bank account. This will allow you to properly record and reconcile the credit card transactions. We've also added workflow for you. You can set up a workflow that alerts someone when a credit card transaction fails, for instance. Together with some additional setups in the credit card setup, you can take responsibility of dealing with those credit card issues from your order processors to your accounting team. So you're starting to store a lot of sensitive data in the database. While the credit card data is not actually stored, it is sent to the gateway for tokenization, you still want to make sure that the data stored is not easily accessed. 
You can do that by encrypting the tenant data. The data stored in NevX credit card solution uses the latest technology available in Business Central to allow that encryption. So let's talk about enabling or disabling different features. You can turn off any one of these options. First of all, if you want to use the credit card, you have to enable that credit card. You can also enable ACH processing. And if you have a card present transaction, like a physical credit card terminal, you would want to turn on the swipe card. If you turn on the status fields, it enables the sales and service documents to display the status of the credit card transactions on specific documents. Enable payment form. This enables a link on the open invoices that are not paid via credit card to allow those customers to pay the invoices via credit card through a payment form online. If you would like to upload those invoices or orders to the gateway, you would turn those on and you can also choose to send email receipts as well. And that's it. That's all it takes to set up Navax credit card. Thank you for watching.